A large portion of the Jewish nation has returned to its homeland, but the heart, soul, and mind of much of the Jewish nation are still in exile mode. This state of affairs must and will inevitably change. This is Torah Nation TV from Jerusalem, and we are speaking with the head of Machon Shiloh, Rabbi David Bar Chaim. Shalom, Rabbi Bar Chaim. Shalom. In a previous video interview on Parshat Vayera, it was mentioned that Chazal speak of the Avot, Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, as having been in the habit of praying to Hashem. Where do we see evidence for this in the Torah? Chazal mentioned that the forefathers, Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, were in the habit of praying to Hashem. And the fact is there are many Pesukim which are in indicative of this fact. And what we'll do now briefly is quote a few of those psukim which Chazal referred to. The first pasuk is to be found in uh, Sefer Bereshith, Perak Yoteth, chapter 19, pasuk Kaf Zain, verse 27. Wayashkem Avraham Babokar, Elham Makom, Asher Omad Shon, Ath Adonai. Avraham rose up early in the morning and went and stood went to that place where he had stood before Hashem. The expression to stand before Hashem is understood here by Hazal as referring to having stood there previously in prayer before Hashem. And it's true that this uh, statement of the Torah, these words in this Pasuk are not a conclusive proof that Avraham was in fact praying to Hashem. It's not an unreasonable explanation, but it's not uh, necessarily the only explanation. And the same could be said with reference to the, uh, the verse quoted by the Hachamim regarding Yaakov Avinu, who, to whom is attributed the practice of praying in the evening, Tefillat Arvith. It says in Perek Kaf Heth, chapter 28, Pasuk Yod, verse 10, Wayese Yaakov mi be'er shava, Wayelech harana, and he arrived or hit upon a place, a certain spot in his journey, and he decided to stay there for the night, because the sun had set. So we're talking about the evening, etc. So it says, and the word, the shoresh, the root, in Hebrew, can be shown from other Pesukim in the Tanakh, to be referring to tefillah, to the, uh, the concept of prayer. And there, in, in, in the other Pesukim, it's quite clear that this is in fact the case. That the word there, piri'ah, refers to tefillah, to prayer. The question is, does this verse here, re with reference to Yaakov, is it here referring to prayer, or, this, or rather the simple meaning, which is, what if makom, that he arrived or hit upon a certain place, uh, and it doesn't, has nothing to do with tefillah. So yes, the question that you ask, is a reasonable one, I think, with re regards to the to, uh, Pesukim uh, brought uh, with reference to Avraham and with reference to Yaakov. However, the Pesuk quoted by the Hachamim with reference to Yishak Avinu, I think, is uh, quite, quite a different matter. This Pesuk appears in Sefer uh, Bereshith, Perek Kaf Dalid, chapter 24, Pasuk Samach Gimel, verse 63. This is when Rivka, Yitzchak's future wife, is uh, approaching his uh, place of dwelling. He, she was brought by the servant of Avraham, Damesek, Eliezer, to Yitzchak to be his wife. And it says that they met Yitzchak out in the fields. And it says, Why Yishak Lasuah Basada that Yishak went out. Now the question is what does it mean, Lasuah Basada? So we'll leave that for a moment. He went out to do something in the field. In the fields, Lifnot Arev before the evening, that is to say towards the end of the day. And then it says that he saw the a caravan of, of uh, camels, etc., approaching. And uh, Rivka re realized that this was Yitzchak, a future husband and she quickly lowered herself down from the camel and covered herself with a veil, etc., for reasons of both sending oath of modesty and also to show respect that she should not approach 
uh, Yitzhak who was on foot whilst riding a camel, which is also something to think about, which perhaps we'll talk about another time. Our discussion today is with regards to this word, Lasu'ah Basadeh. The Yitzhak went out with the intention of being Lasu'ah Basadeh. The fact of the matter is that this word, Lasu'ah, is not entirely clear. For example, the Radak, Rabbi Dawid Kimhi, one of the great Rishonim, uh, medieval commentators on the Torah and a grammarian, uh, in his Sefer Ashurashim, a book of uh, root, root words, root uh, uh, Hebrew roots, he speaks about this pasuk in two places. One in the uh, entry, Suah sin wow heth, and the other in the entry sin yod heth siah. In the one place he says that it refers to uh, siha, which means which speak, which is the word siha can mean uh, talk, speech, and can also refer to prayer. Therefore, and in a number of places in the Tanakh, siah uh, or lishpoch siho, for example, in Tehillim refers to pouring one's heart out in prayer. And in other places, the word siah can refer to plants or things that grow in the ground. Like in Sefer Bereshith, the beginning of Sefer Bereshith, it speaks about siah hasadah, the, the, the uh, things that grow in the field. So the question is, when it says the Yitzhak went out la suah basadeh, what does it mean? Hazal, uh, in more than one place, for example, in the uh, both Talmudim, at the beginning of the fourth chapter of Barachoth, explain that Lasua means he went out to pray. Lasua means he went out towards evening, towards the end of the day, to pray to Hashem. And they quote the Pasuk that we mentioned from Tehillim, talking about Siyah or Lishboch Siho, referring to uh, pouring one's heart out in prayer. The question is, is this the simple, plain meaning of the Pasuk, or is this some kind of a drasha or an asmachta, some kind of uh, less uh, pshat based, not the plain meaning of the pasuk, but uh, more more of a drasha, uh, something f- further removed from the plain meaning of the pasuk. And on this too, we have more than one opinion. And I will quote to you from the different mafarshim. For example, if you look at uh, Targum Onkelos on this pasuk, the Aramaic translation associated with Onkelos. It says that Yitzhak went out into the field, He went out to pray, explicitly, means to pray, in the field towards the evening. And this is also what Rav Sa'ad Gaon writes. He says, Lasuah means lehith palil. And Rashi also says, Lashon tefila. This refers to tefila. So Abraham uh, was, I'm sorry, Yitzhak was going out to pray in the field. And Rashi quotes the Pasuk in Tilim. As it says in Tilim, he says, Perek Kof Beth, 102, Yishpoch Siho, that a person pours out his heart in prayer to Hashem. On the other hand, if we look in the Rashbam, Rashi's grandson, we find a different Pirush altogether. We find that Lasuah is explained uh, by the Rashbam as b- referring to the word Siah Hasadah, as we mentioned at the beginning of Bereshith, referring to plants, bushes, uh, greenery, things that grow on the ground. And Rashbam says, Kolomar la ta'af illa noth, ulir oth inyane po'alaut. He went out into the field to plant trees. La su'ah basadeh means to cause things to grow. In other words, to plant trees and to check and see what, the, what his workers were doing in the field. In other words, to uh, supervise the goings on in, in, uh, on his fields and his property. Which sounds like a slightly unlikely interpretation, one must admit, because why would the Torah mention such a thing to us? Uh, and also to uh, explain la suah basadeh as meaning to plant trees is a little bit, sounds a little bit far-fetched. However, we also find in Ibn Ezra, Rabbi Abraham Ibn Ezra, something very similar. He says that Yitzhak went out into the field, la lecheth ben asihim, to walk amongst the, the trees or the, or the bushes. In other words, he went out to, to walk in the field. And interestingly, we find the Radak, the same Radak who in his Sefer Ashurashim, uh, quotes both interpretations of this word la suah. He, uh, in his perush on Sefer Bereshit, he writes expi- explicitly la suah basada kloma letayel ben asihim to go for a, a stroll, for a walk, for one's enjoyment, for one's pleasure. You would think perhaps uh, amongst amongst the bushes, amongst the greenery in the field. 
It's also interesting to note that in two of the ancient translations of the Torah into other languages uh, undertaken by uh, early Christians, the one, the Latin, the Vulgate or the Vulgata uh, version, w there it is, trans it is one version, the other version is the Syriac version. In the, the Vulgata version, in the Latin, which is, uh, was a work that was uh, done by Hieronymus in the uh, late 4th century, uh, early 5th century, he translates the Suah Basadeh to meditate in the field, which is very close to the, uh, the, the words of Hazar when they explain that it refers to tefillah, to prayer. On the other hand, interestingly, in the Targum Hasuri, in the Syriac Peshitta uh, version of the, of the uh, Bible, the, at least the, the, what we call the, the Hebrew Bible, what the Christians refer to as the Old Testament, that part of that uh, Aramaic translation, the Pshita translation, uh, stems from the late second century, very ancient indeed. We're talking about the uh, latter period of the Tanaim. Uh, there, interestingly enough, it translates the term as meaning that Ishak went to stroll in the field, which is exactly what the Radak said, for example, the Tayyel ben Asihim. And it is very possible that this. Uh, is the original intention, the plain meaning, the pshat of this pasuk. Uh, keep in mind that uh, from what we know, the people who translated the, uh, the, the uh, Torah into the Aramaic version known as the pshita in the second century, many of them were either uh, people familiar with the Jewish sources and they heard the interpretations and the explanations of the Jews on these psukim themselves. They were familiar with them, these, these explanations. Uh, and many of them were in fact converts to, to uh, early converts to Christianity, but they were originally Jews. So this probably reflects an ancient uh, Jewish understanding of the Pasuk. And as we see from the Mepharshim, like the Ibn Ezra and the Radak, this is an interpretation which, which uh, continued to survive amongst the Jewish people throughout the ages. It could be, therefore, that the original interpretation, or meaning rather, of the pasuk, lasuah basada, means to stroll in the field, rather than to meditate or to pray in the field. But of course, I would ask, uh, if that's the case, why does the Torah tell us that Yitzchak went to, for a stroll in the evening, in the, in the late latter part of the day? That's, that is essentially a piece of information which tells us nothing. Uh, unless, unless it's telling us that uh, he went to do something in the field, in a quiet place. He went to pray, to meditate uh, amongst the trees, amongst the bushes, somewhere he could be alone and come get close to Hashem. And this is a well-known concept in Judaism, uh, both in Chazal and uh, more famously in, in more recent uh, generations. This is associated with Rabbi Nachman Breslov, for example who speaks about Hidbodaduth going off to a place to be alone, quiet, meditate, and connecting this to prayer. And in fact, Rabbi Nachman Breslov has an entire Torah at the beginning of the second section of Likutei Moharan, speaking about uh, praying where the, amongst the greenery, amongst the shrubbery, amongst the trees, and that this can, can have a very powerful effect on a person and his prayer. So whether the pshat of the, of the word Lasuah Basada is to stroll in the field or uh, to meditate or pray in the field, I think that Hazal understood that either way, and I can't be certain what uh, some of the Chachamim, and how they understood this Pasuk in terms of the Pshat of the word Lasuah, but I'm sure they did understand that the Torah would not inform us of such a thing if it did not impart to us some very important information. If the Torah wanted just to tell us, for example, that Yitzhak just happened to be out in the field and he saw a caravan of uh, camels approaching, that would have, been, would have been quite sufficient. It didn't have to mention what he was doing in the field. One can be in the field for a hundred reasons, and certainly a person who lives out in the open spaces, as he did, a nomadic or semi-nomadic lifestyle, and says explicitly that he lived in Eretz HaNegev, in the southern part of the country, in the Negev, uh, it doesn't require any explanation why he might be in the field. If it states that he was there, La Suah Basada, Hazal must have understood that this comes to tell us whether it means to stroll 
to spend time, to be alone, in order to come close to Hashem, or whether it means literally to pray or to meditate, the purpose was eventually, the, the final purpose of doing this action, of strolling or being in the field, was to pray, to meditate, to get close to Hashem. And therefore, uh, they saw this as a, a clear indication of the practice of the forefathers, in this case Yitzhak, to pray and to, to do so, sometimes at least, in a quiet and uh, uh, secluded setting, which is conducive to uh, getting closer to Hashem, as Rabbi Nachman Breslau, for example, uh, speaks about at great length. And therefore, I think this is a, a very powerful example of the words of Hazal revealing the, the true pshat, the deep meaning and intention of the Torah, based on the actual, literal meaning of the, of the Pasuk. Thank you, Rabbi Bar Chaim. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the Rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one, if you would like to obtain Berkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the Rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonshilo.org.